So this is National 4, National 5 Chemistry, and this is Unit 2, Nature's Chemistry. And what we're going to be looking at specifically are hydrocarbons and fuels. So the first thing we should ask ourselves is what is a fuel? So a fuel is any substance that burns to produce energy. Um, hopefully you'll be able to uh, give examples of some fuels that you know, things like petrol, diesel, kerosene, uh, and what is inside your Bunsen burner. So all of these fuels are classified as hydrocarbons. Now hydrocarbon um, contains two elements. Hydro shows us that they contain hydrogen and carbons that they contain carbon. So as I said, hydrocarbon is a molecule that contains only carbon and hydrogen. And when these fuels are burned to produce energy, this process is called a combustion reaction. And whenever we talk about combustion or burning, that means that our hydrocarbon is reacting with oxygen. And in your Bunsen burner, the hydrocarbon that you're burning is called methane. So other types of fuel. In this day and age, it's important that we try to reduce our carbon footprint. Um, using hydrogen, hydrocarbons as fuels will increase our carbon footprint. And our carbon footprint um, essentially means how much carbon dioxide we release into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas which leads to climate change and um, global warming. So if we don't want to use hydrocarbons as fuels, what could we use um, that would reduce our carbon footprint? Well, main things would be things we would call renewable energy, uh, energy that we don't uh, need to dig out of the ground and that is always available for us. So solar energy, wind energy are good examples. Also hydroelectric energy, that is um, energy that is produced from flowing water. So that could be a river um, turning a um, water wheel, or it could be a dam on a river uh, where we use the flow of the water through the dam uh, to produce electricity, or even using the tides. But solar, wind, and hydroelectric energy are ways in which we could reduce our carbon footprint. And that word that we would use to describe those fuels that we can use over and over again is renewable energy. And we could also, um, a cleaner way um, would be rather than burning hydrocarbons, would be if we could burn pure hydrogen. The only product of that is water. And so we wouldn't be producing carbon dioxide. And then we also have biofuels. So biofuels are burning natural material that grows. So that wood can be considered a biofuel because it is replaced very quickly. And other biofuels might be gas produced by bacteria um, that we can use as a source of fuel. And hydroenergy that I already said. So hydrocarbons as fuels. We know that hydrocarbons are made up of only carbon and hydrogen atoms. And it is important that we know how these atoms bond together to form molecules. So can you remember how many bonds an atom of carbon can form and how many bonds an atom of hydrogen can form? You might try and think of valency from third year or from unit one to answer this. Well, carbon is in group four. It has four electrons in its outer energy shell, its outer energy level, that means it will form four bonds. And typically the four bonds that carbon forms are covalent bonds. So in each hydrocarbon, each carbon atom forms four bonds. So four is the magic number. 
Now what we're going to move on to is something called homologous series. And hydrocarbons are split into different homologous series. Homologous series are a group of chemicals that can be represented by one general formula that have similar chemical properties and show a trend in physical properties. And by physical properties, we mean things like their melting and boiling points. So for example, um, a trend that you might see is that if you increase the number of carbons in the homologous series, that you notice melting points and boiling points increasing or decreasing, but there has to be a trend. So our learning intentions for the rest of this lesson are to be able to name and draw structures for compounds known as alkanes. And alkanes is the first homologous series that we're gonna look at. And also be able to give the general formula for alkanes. So before we get on to this, we need to learn some uh, things called prefixes. Now a prefix is a short part of a word that goes at the start of a chemical's name, and prefixes give us a little bit of information. Now regarding hydrocarbons, these prefixes tell us how many carbons are in the chain. So the number of carbons, we can go from one to eight, and that's all you need to know. And obviously chains can be longer than that, but all you need to know for National 5 is up to eight. And we're going to learn the prefixes. If there is one carbon, the prefix is meth or meth. And um, two, it's F or eth. Three is prope. Four is bute. Five is pent. Six is hex. Seven is hept and it is oct. So one way uh, to remember this is to come up with an acronym. Or, um, so for example, monsters eat pupils but prefer hairy haggis, okay? So that is meth, eth, probe, bute, pent, hex, hept, and oct. And you can maybe come up with your own acronym for remembering um, the eight prefixes. So we're going to go straight into the alkanes now. Now the alkanes, they are a group of carbons which all have a name ending in A-N-E, in. So if you see a chemical and its name ends in A-N-E, you know that it belongs to the alkanes. And the name of each alkene starts with a prefix that tells you how many carbon atoms it contains. The first member of the alkene family has one carbon atom, and so it is called methane, or methane, depending on how you choose to pronounce it. It has a molecular formula, CH4, and its structural formula is that one carbon with four hydrogens around it. And you draw all the hydrogens at 90 degrees to one another. And hopefully in class, you'll be able to build a model uh, of methane and then trying to extend the chain um, to ones that contain two or three carbons. So the second one in the series with two carbons is ethane or FN, if you want to say so. Um, what happens is that you draw the two carbons first in a chain, and then you fill in the hydrogens until each carbon has four bonds. And it's got a molecular formula, C2H6. Now, as we keep going on, we've got propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, and octane, if you look at the molecular formula on the right hand side, we've got C3H8, C4H10, C5H12, C6H14, C7H16, C8H18. And if we look at the formula, so propane, a chain of three carbons and then fill in the hydrogens, butane, 
four carbons, fill in the hydrogens, pentane five, hexane six, heptane seven, and octane eight. The shortened structural formula for each one of these is you look at each carbon in the chain. So if we look at propane, the first carbon has three hydrogens around it. So we say CH3. Then we move on to the next carbon. The one in the middle has two hydrogens. So it's a CH2. And then the final one is a CH3. If we look at pentane, the first carbon has three hydrogens, so CH3. Then the next one, two hydrogens, CH2. The next one, two hydrogens, CH2. The next one, two hydrogens, CH2. And the final one is a CH3. Um, and once you ha end up having lots of those CH2 groups, you can see that to simplify it, if we look at octane, it's written CH3. Then we've got CH2 with a six. That just tells us that there are six CH2s on in a row. And then we have a CH3. Now, um, what you can do now is have a go at drawing an alkane with the structural, structural formula C6H14. And what we'd like you to do is try that past paper question from 2014. Using the information in the table, make a general statement linking the flash point to the number of carbon atoms. So for the starter, for drawing your structure, you should have had six carbons in a line. The first carbon with three hydrogens on it, then the next one with two hydrogens, and the third one with two hydrogens, fourth one with two hydrogens, the fifth one with two hydrogens, and then the sixth one with three hydrogens. For the starter, uh, for the, sorry, the question relating to the table, what you could see, so hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, so nonane would be nine, you're seeing that as the number of carbon atoms is increasing, your flash point is also increasing. So for a question like that, you don't have to relate it to a specific number that it's increasing by, it's just a general trend. So as the length of the carbon chain increases, or as the number of carbon atoms increases, the flash point increases. So now what we want you to do is we're going to be thinking about our general formula. Now, can you find a link between the number of carbon and hydrogen atoms in each alkane? So just to give you a clue, the first one was C1H4. The second one, C2H6. And the third one, C3H8. Can you think of a relationship between the number of carbon atoms and the number of hydrogen atoms in an alkane. Well, that relationship is called the general formula. And if we have a general formula, that allows us to write the molecular formula for any member of the alkane series. Now the general formula for alkanes is Cn H2n plus 2. And n is the number of carbon atoms. So for example, if we're looking for a molecule with one carbon, that would be C1, and then that means one carbon. And then to work out the number of hydrogens, well, two times one is two, plus two gives us four. So for the first um, alkane with one carbon, it would have four hydrogens. If we had two carbons, uh, N would be two, so it's going to be C2, and then to work out the number of hydrogens, well, two times two is four, plus two is six. So the second alkane with two carbon atoms has six hydrogen atoms.
and we can go on and on. So for an alkene with 11 carbon atoms, N equals 11. The number of hydrogen atoms is going to be 2 times N plus 2. So that's 2 times 11, which is 22, plus 2 is 24. So we can then write our chemical formula, C11H24. And so a general formula allows us to write the chemical formula for any alkene with any number of carbon atoms. Now, the trend that we see in the homologous series of alkanes is that as the number of carbon atoms increases, the melting points and boiling points increase. Now, hydrocarbons are most commonly in this series. And remember, hydrocarbons are compounds containing only hydrogen and carbon. Alkenes are an example of a homologous series. And now we're going to look at some of the uses of alkenes. So the biggest use of alkenes is as fuels. So propane gas is used um, in um, camper stoves for cooking and for heating. And octane is one of the chemicals inside petrol. And it is used as a fuel, obviously, in uh, motor vehicles. Now, the situation gets a little bit more complicated because an alkene doesn't have to be a straight line. It can have what we call branches. And this is where off our main chain, we have an extra carbon atom coming off the chain. So for example, in the diagram at the bottom, if we count along the straight line of carbons, there are five carbons in that chain, and then we have one additional carbon coming off the third carbon in that chain. That's what we call a branched alkene. When it comes to naming branched alkenes, there are certain rules to follow. So the first thing we do is we look for the longest chain of carbons. And in this um, example, it is one, two, three, four, five carbons, and that means that it's going to be based on pentane. And then we also look at which number carbon is the branch on, and the branch is on carbon number three. Now, the branch has one carbon, and one carbon has the prefix of meth or meth. And so what we call this branch is 3-methylpentane. So 3, that tells us that the branch is on carbon number 3. Meth tells us that the branch contains one carbon. The isle part, methyl, that just tells us it's a branch. It's a pile. And then pentane, that tells us where the branch is coming off, that the branch is coming off of a pentane molecule at position number three, and the methyl, that tells us that there's one carbon in the branch. So here are the rules for naming branched alkenes. You pick the longest unbranched carbon chain, then you number that chain. You want to make sure that the branch is on the smallest carbon number as possible. So that means sometimes you have to count your chain backwards. You need to decide how many carbons are on the branch, and then you put the name together um, using this tool. So the first thing you do is write a number, which tells us what number carbon the branch is on. Then you put a dash or a hyphen. Then the number of carbon atoms in the branch using a prefix. So if it's one, it's going to be methyl. If it's two, it's going to be ethyl. And then finally, we use the name of the longest carbon chain. So if the longest carbon chain is three carbons, the end name is going to be propane. 
it's four, it's going to be um, butane. So we've got some examples here. So this is a chain. The longest chain has four carbons in it. One, two, three, four. Then there's one branch. That branch is found on carbon number two, and the branch contains one carbon. So the longest chain is four carbons, that's butane. The carbon is on branch number two. Sorry, the branch is on carbon number two, and there's only one carbon atom in the branch. So it's going to be methyl. When we put all of that together, it is two, then we need to put the dash, methyl, that tells us that the branch has one carbon in it, and then butane, that tells us what the longest chain is. Then we've got this example here, this is our final slide for today. The longest unbranched chain is five carbons. Now that is because if we start at what looks like a branch and go down, one, two, three, and then go right, four, five, that is the longest chain. And then our branch is coming off of carbon three and our branch has one carbon. Now this is a common tool that the uh, exams try to trick you. That sometimes something looks like a branch but actually it's part of the longest chain. So always count every option to find your longest chain. So when we put all this information together we end up with three methyl pentane. And so that has been our introduction to fuels and our introduction to um, alkanes. Remember the naming systems for alkanes. Remember that the general formula was CnH2n plus 2 and that the trend we see is that as the number of carbon atoms increases, the melting and boiling points for alkanes also increases. So that has been our first lesson for unit two. I will catch you next time.